Most people think high creatinine is just a lab result, but it's more than that. It's your kidneys quietly saying, I'm struggling. And the truth is, the protein you eat every day might be pushing your creatinine even higher without you realizing it. If you've been told your levels are up, or you're just worried about your kidney health, this video is for you. I've spent over 15 years working with kidney patients, and I've seen how small changes in protein choices can lead to real improvements, more energy, less swelling, and better lab numbers. So here's what we're going to do. I'll show you three protein foods that are safe, clean, and gentle on your kidneys. I'll also show you three protein sources that seem healthy, but could actually be harming your kidneys over time. And if you stay with me until the end, I'll give you one bonus tip that has nothing to do with food, but helps your body flush out waste more effectively. Most people miss it, but it could make all the difference. This isn't medical advice. Always talk to your doctor. But if you care about protecting your kidneys, this video will give you a real head start. And if you're serious about learning more, hit subscribe and drop a quick comment saying, I'm in, so I know you're with me. Safe protein for high creatinine. 1. Eggs white. Do you wake up feeling tired or swollen even after eating what seems like a healthy breakfast? If your creatinine levels are high, your kidneys are already under a lot of pressure, and the kind of protein you choose every day can either help or hurt them. One of the best choices? Egg whites. They're light, clean, and easy for your body to process without creating a heavy load of waste. Just three egg whites give you about 11 grams of high-quality protein with almost no fat, zero cholesterol, and very low levels of potassium and phosphorus. That's critical, because when your kidneys are struggling, those minerals can quickly build up and cause more damage. Many people don't realize this, but phosphorus is a hidden threat for kidney patients. It doesn't show up in taste, but it's packed into things like yolks, meat, and dairy. When your kidneys can't filter it out, it puts more strain on your already tired system. Compared to heavier proteins like red meat or processed sausage, egg whites create far less nitrogen waste. That means your kidneys don't have to work overtime to clean it up. I've had patients who used to start their mornings with bacon or sausage, feeling bloated, foggy, and worn out. But once they switched to egg white breakfasts, they felt lighter, more clear-headed, and even noticed their creatinine levels either stabilized or dropped slightly over time. You can scramble them gently with herbs like parsley or basil, mix them into veggie stir-fries, or even turn them into protein pancakes with oats and cinnamon. The key is to keep your meals low-sodium and kidney-friendly. And if you're buying egg whites in a carton, check the label. Some brands sneak in added salt, gums, or preservatives. The best choice says 100% egg whites and nothing else. And what about whole eggs? Yolks do offer nutrition but they're high in phosphorus and cholesterol. If your care team has advised you to limit phosphorus, it's safer to stick with the whites. Have you ever tried swapping your usual breakfast protein for egg whites? Did you notice any difference? Maybe less heaviness, less swelling, or more energy? Share your experience in the comments. Someone else on the same journey might need to hear your story today. Two, white fish, COD, tilapia, haddock, and similar. Think red meat is your only protein option? Not when your kidneys are on the line. If your creatinine levels are high, your body needs clean, gentle fuel. And lean whitefish might be exactly what you're missing. Fish like cod, tilapia, and haddock are light on your kidneys but rich in benefits. Just a small 3-ounce cooked portion gives you 20 to 22 grams of high-quality protein with far less fat and fewer minerals like phosphorus and potassium compared to red meat or processed foods. That's key because damaged kidneys can't handle excess minerals well, and every extra bit becomes a burden. Another thing most people don't realize is how purines affect kidney health. White fish is naturally lower in purines, which means it won't flood your system with uric acid. When uric acid builds up, it triggers inflammation. And over time, that can push your kidneys into even more trouble. Swapping red meat for white fish just a few times a week could make a real difference, but here's the catch. How you cook it matters just as much as what you cook. Skip the heavy sauces and deep frying. Instead, try baking or steaming your fish with a splash of olive oil, fresh lemon juice, and simple herbs like garlic, parsley, or dill. 
Want more flavor? Turmeric and black pepper are not only tasty, but they're also full of natural antioxidants. And they won't overload your body with sodium or additives. And when it comes to side dishes, keep them kidney smart too. Cauliflower mash, roasted bell peppers, or sautéed green beans all make great low-potassium choices that round out your plate without adding pressure to your system. Now, for a quick warning, be cautious with prepackaged or frozen fish products. Breaded fish sticks or ready-to-fry options often contain high levels of sodium, phosphates, and preservatives. Check the label. If you see words like sodium phosphate, modified starch, or anything that sounds like a chemistry experiment, put it back. Whenever possible, go for wild-caught fish. It's usually cleaner and lower in contaminants, but if you're working with a tight budget, that's okay. Just rinse your fish well, use clean cooking methods, and stick to the best quality you can access. What about you? What kind of white fish is common in your area? Drop it in the comments. Your answer might help someone else make a better choice today. 3. Quinoa What if I told you there's a plant-based food that works almost like meat, but without all the kidney stress? It's not soy, not beans, it's quinoa. Quinoa is one of the rare plant foods that gives you all nine essential amino acids, which means your body can use it like complete protein, just like chicken or fish. That's a game changer if you're trying to cut back on meat, but still need quality protein that won't overload your kidneys. One cup of cooked quinoa gives you around 8 grams of clean, plant-based protein. But the real magic? It creates a much lower acid load than meat. And when your kidneys are struggling, less acid means less pressure on your system. That's not just theory. It makes a real difference in how your body feels. And unlike animal proteins, quinoa also produces less nitrogen waste. That matters because when your kidneys are weak, nitrogen byproducts can build up in your blood, making you feel tired, foggy, and even more inflamed. But quinoa doesn't stop there. It brings something extra to the table. Magnesium. This little mineral helps control blood pressure, relax muscles, and calm the nervous system, all things that can get out of balance when kidney function drops. On top of that, quinoa is packed with fiber, and when your gut is healthy, inflammation goes down, blood sugar becomes more stable, and your immune system stays balanced, all of which protect your kidneys even more. If you're new to quinoa, here's a tip. Always rinse it well under cold water before cooking. It has a natural coating called saponins that can mess with digestion if you skip that step. Then, just cook it like rice, in plain water or a light homemade broth with almost no salt. My favorite way? I toss it with grilled zucchini, roasted red peppers, a pinch of herbs, and a splash of olive oil. It's warm, filling, and kidney-friendly. But like with any good thing, portion size matters. Stick to about one cup of cooked quinoa per meal unless your dietitian says otherwise. Even healthy foods can add up if you go overboard. So have you tried quinoa before? What's your go-to kidney-friendly recipe? Drop it in the comments. Your favorite mix might inspire someone else to eat smarter, feel better, and support their kidneys one bite at a time. If this is helping you so far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and if you've got any questions about your own creatinine levels or protein choices, drop them in the comments. I read every one. Let's figure it out together. Protein to avoid for kidney patients. 1. Dell meats and processed cold cuts. Let's talk about one of the biggest hidden dangers in today's diets. Processed deli meats. Ham, turkey slices, salami, bologna, cured beef. They may look innocent. After all, they're low in fat, packed with protein and easy to throw into a lunchbox. Some are even labeled natural or heart healthy. But if you're dealing with high creatinine or want to protect your kidneys, these meats could be quietly damaging your body from the inside out. The biggest red flag, sodium. Just one serving can contain over 1,000 milligrams of salt and most people eat double that in one sandwich without blinking. That's like pouring salt on an open wound. And in this case, the wound is your kidneys. High sodium raises your blood pressure and slowly erodes the delicate filters inside your kidneys, called glomerulus. But sodium isn't the only problem. The real threat is something you may have never heard of, phosphate additives. Unlike the phosphorus that naturally occurs in food, these chemical additives, 
names like sodium phosphate, phosphoric acid, or pyrophosphate, are absorbed into your body at lightning speed. Up to 90% gets into your bloodstream almost instantly. That flood of phosphate throws off your calcium balance, damages your bones, and even causes hardening, calcification, in your blood vessels. Over time, it's like turning your arteries into cement pipes. And here's the scary part. You won't see or taste any of this. These additives are used to extend shelf life, enhance texture, and create that smoky flavor people associate with deli meats. Even organic or clean label products can still hide these chemicals in small print. So what can you do? Start by checking labels. If you see anything in the ingredients list with FOS, just walk away. Your kidneys will thank you later. Instead, cook fresh chicken or turkey breast at home. Slice it yourself. Freeze it in small portions for the week. Season with herbs, garlic, a touch of lemon. It tastes better, it's safer, and it puts you in control of what goes into your body. Be honest, have you been eating deli meat thinking it was a smart choice? Take a look at your fridge, grab that label, look for the FOSS. You might be surprised by what you find. And if you've already made the switch to fresher proteins, tell us your favorite go-to prep. Your comment might help someone else take their first step toward better kidney health. Because your kidneys weren't made to filter preservatives, they were made to filter life. 2. Beef and other red meats. And love steak? If your creatinine is high, your kidneys might not feel the same way. Beef is flavorful, satisfying, and a comfort food for many people, but when your kidneys are under stress, red meats like beef can quietly add to the pressure, without you even realizing it. Here's why. Beef naturally contains creatine, and your body breaks that down into creatinine. That's the same waste product your kidneys are already trying to remove. So every time you eat beef, especially in large portions or frequently, you're giving your kidneys extra work. And if they're already struggling, that buildup starts showing up in your lab results. But creatinine isn't the only concern. Red meat also increases something called dietary acid load. Basically, how much acid your body has to neutralize after eating. To balance this, your body pulls minerals from your bones and forces your kidneys to filter even more waste. That's a double burden, your bones and your kidneys both taking the hit. There's more. Eating too much red meat can also raise your uric acid levels. That's the stuff that causes painful flare-ups like gout. And higher uric acid has been linked to more inflammation throughout your body, which is never good news for your kidneys. And it's not just what you eat, it's how you cook it. Grilling, searing, or charring meat at high heat creates compounds called AGEs, advanced glycation end products. These are tough for your kidneys to eliminate and add to the toxic load. They may taste great, but your kidneys pay the price. Now, some people say, but I buy lean beef. That might be great for your heart, but it doesn't change the fact that beef lean or not, still turns into creatinine. The issue isn't just fat, it's the waste your body has to manage after the meal is over. So ask yourself, do you feel more puffy, bloated, or unusually tired after eating red meat? Do your joints feel stiff or sore the next day? Try writing it down and compare with your lab results. You might see a connection. This doesn't mean you can never enjoy beef again. If your doctor says it's okay, you might still have small portions once in a while. The key is moderation and smarter cooking methods. Swap the grill for slow cooking, stewing, or pressure cooking. Use herbs instead of salt. Keep your meals simple, clean, and kidney conscious. But if you're already in stage 3 CKD or further along, talk with your care team before adding red meat back in. Every kidney is different. Your plan should match your body. Bottom line, red meat might taste good, but for kidneys under pressure, it's a heavy burden they might not be able to carry. Have you noticed how your body reacts after eating beef? Share your story in the comments your experience could help someone else make a better choice today. 3. Whey protein powders and mass gainers. Let's talk about one of the most common protein traps out there, whey protein powders, and mass gainers. If you've ever walked into a gym or browsed the supplement aisle, you've seen those giant tubs promising muscle gains and faster recovery. 
On the surface, they sound like a dream. Just one scoop gives you 20 to 30 grams of fast-absorbing protein. But here's the part most people miss. When your kidneys are already under stress, that fast flood of protein breaks down into nitrogen waste almost instantly. And who's responsible for cleaning up that waste? Your kidneys. It's like dumping a full bucket into a clogged drain. It overwhelms the system. That kind of overload can raise your creatinine levels, especially if you're dehydrated post-workout or already have reduced kidney function. And those mass gainer powders? They crank things up even further. Massive doses of protein mixed with sugar, fillers, and strange additives. You're not just fueling muscle. You're overloading your filtration system. It doesn't stop with protein. Most powders are packed with artificial sweeteners like sucralose or aspartame, plus chemical thickeners, emulsifiers, dyes, and artificial flavors. Your kidneys and liver have to process all of it. Even if it doesn't show up on a blood test right away, your body may be waving small red flags, bloating, fatigue, headaches, or feeling unusually thirsty after your shake. Does that mean whey is always bad? Not necessarily. If your kidney function is stable and your doctor or dietitian gives the green light, you might be able to use a small amount. But how and when you use it matters. Don't slam a huge scoop after a workout. Instead, spread your protein intake throughout the day and stay well hydrated before and after. That helps your kidneys handle the load without unnecessary stress. But here's the honest question. Are you using whey or any kind of protein powder right now? How many scoops are you taking daily? And have you noticed any changes, like swelling, fatigue, or shifts in your lab results? Drop a comment below. Your story might be the one thing someone else needs to hear today. Because at the end of the day, protein is important but your kidneys are priceless. Bonus non-food habit, gentle intermittent fasting. What if your kidneys just need time to breathe, not more pills? When your creatinine is high, giving your kidneys a break can make a real difference. A simple way to start is with a 12-12 eating window. Eat between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., then fast overnight. This gives your kidneys time to rest instead of filtering food all day. Over time, and with your doctor's approval, you can shift to a 14 10 window. Why does this help? Fasting reduces waste, supports autophagy, your body's way of cleaning out damaged cells, lowers inflammation, and improves insulin response, all of which help protect your kidneys. Start slow, stay hydrated, avoid if you're pregnant, on medication that requires food or have health conditions. Have you tried time-restricted eating? Drop your experience in the comments. Someone else might need your story. Because sometimes, the best thing for your kidneys is less. Let's wrap it up. If your creatinine is high or your kidneys are feeling the pressure, it's time to make smarter choices. Go for clean proteins like egg whites, lean whitefish, and small portions of well-prepared quinoa. These create less waste for your kidneys to filter. At the same time, cut back hard on the hidden dangers, like deli meats full of salt and phosphate additives, red meat that adds acid and inflammation, and protein powders that overload your system. And remember, your kidneys need breaks too. Try a gentle fasting window like 12 hours on, 12 off, and always stay hydrated. A few small steps go a long way. Read labels carefully. Control your portions. Cook at home when you can, and pay attention to how you feel. Your body gives you clues. Your kidneys work 24-7 to keep you going. Treat them with care, and they'll take care of you. If this video helped you feel more confident about your protein choices, leave a comment below and tell me which protein will you add or cut back this week. Type I choose kidney safe protein if you're making a change. Type of protein, and hey, don't miss the next video. We're talking about one everyday habit that silently damages millions of kidneys, and hardly anyone gets warned about it in time. See you there.